Hey guys, what's up? So today we will deal with measures of inflation. Obviously, you have watched inflation 1.1 and 1.2, where we dealt with the introduction and basic features of inflation. Today we will be dealing with WPI, CPI, core inflation, and SPI. So this is presented by me, and uh, this is an academy where you are watching all these videos. If you have any doubt or any query, you can ask on this Facebook page. Basically, inflation measurement is done on basis of some period. Either it can be an annual basis, that is, it will be taken an average of 52 weeks. Yeah, every year has 52 weeks, or it can be point to point. So, for example, this particular week, let's say this is the 21st week of the year. So, last year's 21st week will be taken into account, and then you will be comparing both of them, and then the inflation can be calculated. This is called as point to point annual inflation rate calculation. Okay, it is measured on the basis of changes in the inflation rate okay between a particular week of last year and the same week of the current year so i hope you got this point clear anyway moving forward see measures of inflation either it can be done on the basis of rate which we'll be dealing with now so rate can be either wpi cpi okay and the other measures is obviously done on the basis of causes so that is obviously your dimple that is demand pull and your cost push inflation and there is a sub sub part of cost push that is called as structural inflation okay so i think we have taught about talked about this in the previous videos anyway so there will be some changes in the price of goods and services and there are certain indices developed in india these are called as wholesale price index consumer price index and service price index which is common is we use something called as feature of base year see base year is a particular year which is taken as the standard against which all the other years performance is measured so this is a particular reference year so this is the keyword it is used as a reference to calculate the price rise in a particular year for example you have to calculate the inflation of 2015 so the prices of uh, let's say any juice bottle of one liter is 115 rupees and your base year is 2004 and it was just uh, 50 rupees so this is the inflation which is and uh, there is almost more than 120 percent rise in the prices as you can see more than that and so this is what is called as approximately 130 percent rise in prices and this is the inflation which is carried with vis-a-vis -vis the base year 2004 is that understood so for wpi we are using till date we are using 2004 as the base year but recently it has been revised to 2011 to 2012 so how do we choose base year usually base year is the one which is standard which is the norm which is the average it should not have any drastic uh, disturbances for example you can't choose a year where there was drought or there was low monsoon or there was tsunami or there was earthquake which disturbed the uh, macroeconomic indicators is that understood and there are other other features of base years also which we will be dealing in later parts when we taught teach you fiscal policy anyway so the wholesale price index this is the first one for today it is an index obviously what is an index basically it's a ratio multiplied by 100 most of the time that is how an index is calculated uh, to measure the change in the average price level of goods see this is the keywords goods it do not include services okay traded in the wholesale market it is wholesale so wholesale means like huge scaling is there so for example if you are eating any uh, anything at all like any uh, sauce or something like that so 100 bottles will be sold at a much cheaper rate per bottle when it is you the consumer who is buying it at an individual level so wholesale prices is different than the consumer prices it can be used as a central measure of inflation in certain countries but this is the key point inflation on wpi is called as headline inflation please please remember it can be asked in the examination headline inflation is wpi calculated inflation it is measured by DIPP, that is Department of Industrial Policy and Promotion. Please remember again, this is one, one of the most common question asked. And it is a very, very important statistical indicator. Why? Because government policies like inflation management, monitoring of prices of essential commodities and lots of government policies are completely dependent on WPI indicator. Is that understood? And this is again a very, very critical point. So all these are very critical points. Before 2009, it was calculated on a weekly basis, but then it was thought it is too much frequency. So after 2009, it is calculated on a monthly basis with one month lag. So it means that for April, 
uh, there will be a lag so we'll be calculating actually of the previous month so there is one month lag whenever you calculate WPI now there are total 676 items in WPI very much uh, not needed you can this 676 you can remember earlier it was 435 not needed so out of 676 roughly 20% is the primary products and 555 items are of manufactured products that is secondary product okay it is more comprehensive picture of inflation is provided by WPI and it is based on the recommendation of Abhijit Sen. Now obviously there has to be some limitations of WPI also. So it do not include services such as health, IT, education, transport. This is an extremely important point. So if tomorrow in mains examination you are asked to write for WPI in 200 words. So I hope you remember these two slides and you will be able to get almost 7 to 8 marks out of 10. It does not account, again the second limitation, it does not account for unorganized sector, extremely important again, which contributes roughly 35% of the total manufactured output. So two, no services and no manufactured products, no secondary unorganized involvement. Okay, so unorganized sector is not involved, services are not involved. So this was WPI in short for you. Now we move on to consumer price index that is CPI. You must have read, all of us have read these in Hindu and economic times. It is basically, basically a measure estimating the average price of consumer goods. This is now at U and I level, the consumer level. We go to a shop, we get one bottle of sauce or two bottle of sauce or one packet of noodles or maybe one kilogram of sugar. We don't go and buy 200 kgs of sugar, right? So we deal at consumer level and households deal at consumer level and it includes goods as well as services this is the key point okay there is huge diversities there is huge disparities between income so there will be disparities in the consumption also by if you have lakhs of rupees then you will buy louis vuitton purse but if you are very poor then you will buy 100 rupees bags also similarly the manufactured goods will differ your food items will differ your services preference will differ everything will differ depending upon the wages and income you have. So obviously India cannot evolve a single and a comprehensive CPI. So we have four CPIs but now they are included even up to seven. So three CPIs have been added that is rural, urban and R plus U. So it takes the number to seven. So we will deal with them in very very short period. Basically you need to remember these four points about them. First of all uh, you don't need to remember the number of commodities in the basket okay this information is not needed for individual CPIs you can go through the base year but again that is not an important feature and uh, then in which year it was introduced again this is not an important feature and finally the fourth feature is the lag period in the calculation again you can have a certain glance through it just to get yourself familiarized but they will not ask these four information on an individual basis so CPI for industrial workers is the 2001 is the base year. Basically there is one month frequency of CPI for industrial workers and there is again a time lag of one month. Is that absolutely understood? So it is done on a basis of monthly basis with the one lag, one month time lag. Very very important feature. It mainly focuses on the government employees. Okay. It is taken into consideration. It is for them and it do not include bank employee and it do not include embassy personnel because they will distort the numbers consumer price index number for industrial workers is calculated by labor bureau it was asked in preliminary examination 2015 of upsc cse okay now the wages and salaries of the central government employees are revised on the basis of this index absolutely understood dns allowance is announced twice a year this is also based on this particular indices and finally this can you relate to the seventh pay commission which is coming next year so the pay commission's recommendation are also based on cpi iw so can you remember now government employees dns allowance is labor bureau then cpi iw now again there is a difference between cpi and this index number okay so you need to know which is calculated by which and exhaustive details. This is asked very, very frequently by UPSC. So remember, please remember CPI index number for IW is calculated by Labor Bureau. Now CPI urban non-manual employees. Okay. Is that understood? So for them, 1984 is the base period, two months lag monthly calculation. It has a very limited use. It is used for uh, sometimes determination of DA of some foreign companies 
like embassies i just told you embassies were excluded so here they are included it is also used by income tax for calculation of capital gains i'll not go into much details now but when we will deal with stock market i'll tell you what are capital gains and it is also used by central statistical organization cso okay so now moving forward we will deal with the cpi agriculture labor so basically 1986 to 87 is the base year for this and their monthly frequency is there and it has 3 weeks time lag again not important just remember the frequency is monthly for most of the these indexes and it is used for revising minimum wages okay for agricultural laborers in different states is that absolutely understood so basically that's how you should progress for agricultural labor because the name says agricultural labor so we need use it to revise the minimum wages so when it started maybe it was 70 rupees now it is 130 rupees it will just keep on increasing because of inflation and finally cpi for rural workers which are not agricultural workers so the 83 as the base year so again it will be used for the benefit of rural workers and calculating inflation and in their life again it is monthly frequency so as you can see all four cpi still now have monthly frequency is that understood and wpi also has monthly frequency from now again so as i told you four were the earlier one in 2011 there were three more introduced there were cpi urban cpi rural and cpi urban plus rural and 2010 was used as the base in this particular case the combination it takes both the indexes that is the rural plus urban and it take appropriate weights of all of them so now this is the key point all seven cpis exist together people think that three have come so four have vanished no four are still very very relevant and very 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 much in use so please remember these points it will help you in long run now when compared to wpi cpi has much 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 larger weightage of primary articles which is 57% what does it convey this can be asked in assertion region also so food inflation again i am repeating food inflation is reflected much 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 more in cpi while it is not reflected in wpi because wpi just gave 20% weightage to primary articles so i hope it is clear now it is extremely critical information the entire video is very high yield now what is core inflation see there is there is some uh, core picture which is distorted by some volatile items so distortion is created by some volatile items these volatile items are f and f that is food and fuel for example if you have a bad monsoon so food will go haywire if you have diseases spreading in plants food will decrease in production if you have tsunami food may suffer in coastal areas similarly if you have oil cartel like opec they can decide whatever the hell they want to do with fuel similarly there is gulf war invasion of middle east or some diplomacy ties have been suffered so fuel will also may decrease or increase the prices so these are not in our hand and we can't control their prices so what we can do is we can exclude them and we calculate everything else but energy and food items this will lead to production of core inflation so volatile items will provide some distorted picture of inflation in the economy is that absolutely understood core inflation is calculated using consumer price index and it excludes energy and food products so this is what i wanted to convey to begin with now why food okay because of bad monsoon because of hoarding because of disease of plants as i have already told you so it can increase or decrease if monsoon is very good food can increase if there is good export or then food prices can go up if there is exporting more anything can happen hoarding can do whatever the hell they want to do they usually take care of lots and lots of material and they sell it when the prices are high so why why oil or fuel or energy because opec cartelization what do you mean by cartel so there are cartels we can create semi monopoly type of thing so oligopoly you can also call them they can decide the prices among themselves then gulf war like situation or invasion of middle east by some powerful nations or diplomatic ties ties being severed so this will all lead to fluctuations in the fuel or energy prices that is why we exclude them in core inflation calculation so basically whatever is beyond the control of government of india then it is excluded from the calculation of core inflation for example onion prices are right now rupees 80 per kg there may be various factors behind it like decreased production or hoarding or more export or whatever can be the reason so this is an example of a supply shock because there is no supply 
and that will severely affect the prices for that particular product. So, we will not again I am repeating we will not include it in the calculation of core inflation. So, the prices of these goods may frequently increase or decrease at very very rapid rates but the price disturbance is not at all reflective of economy's overall price level. This is a very very key indicator. So, let's say you are an intelligent guy and you are studying in a good school but your teacher keeps on frequently changing. So, your numbers are not coming up to the mark, your marks are not but does not mean that you are not doing good. It's just because some external factors which are beyond your control as simple as that. So, we what 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 since these are temporary factors we take care of them by removing them and we do not include them in the calculation because they lie outside the economy and they automatically reverse later. So, since we can't control them so we tend to exclude them. Now finally for today is the service price index uh, basically what happens is services contributes almost 57 percent of India's GDP then 15 percent roughly comes from agriculture and rest 25 to 28 percent roughly comes from this is 15 to 17 percent comes from industries or the secondary sector. Services are contributing more than half of the GDP but we do not have any index so far this is the keyword to measure the price changes in the service sector this is extremely sad. So, for example, doctor fees can at my time when I became first year MBBS student 50 to 100 rupees now it is 500 to 1000 rupees. So can you see the drastic increase in the fees similarly lawyers, CA all these service provider hospitality industry. So, there is no measure for inflation in this particular sector. So, also WPI only includes primary and secondary sectors basically it is focused on commodity producing sectors and it does not include tertiary sector. So, because of all these reasons combined together there was a dire need for focusing on focusing on service price index. So, now we are focusing on service price index obviously it is an experimental stage but let us see it is recommended by Abhijit Sen during 93 to 94 while well, he was revising WPI he was chairman of a working group. So, he recommended this also national statistical commission which was headed by C. Rangarajan. So, both of these are extremely world renowned economist he was even member of planning commission which erstwhile planning commission so, so to say. Now, Office of Economic Advisor of Ministry of Commerce and Industry again this can be asked which is the which ministry is developing it Ministry of Commerce and Industry along with assistance from basically technical assistance from World Bank assisted economic reforms projects they are trying to develop this sector specific index is that understood. So, again this can be a question maybe to next year or year after that. So, currently it is focused on only selected services only is the keyword and others are not included ok. It covers road transport, railways, airways, business, bank, insurance, etc, etc and currently it is an experimental stage. So, I hope these three videos have made inflation slightly clearer to you. So, if you want me to make more videos and get I, I used to make more videos on economics do spread the word and be a part of this education revolution. We really appreciate your support and this is the YouTube channel Un Academy. Do hit the thumbs up it really helps us to know whether you have liked the video or not so that we can improve us and do reply your valuable suggestions in the comment section below please please spread it among these are the Facebook URLs and these are the Twitter handles you can tag them and ask any query. Thank you for watching the tutorial you guys are amazing thank you for the support have an awesome day.